We're looking at the text of Luke 4, 1 through 13, which is the gospel reading for the first Sunday in Lent in the three-year lectionary series. And we're looking at the temptation of Jesus and the role the temptation plays for us as Christians as we journey these 40 days through Lent. Of course, the clear and significant connection for us is that we are connected to the struggle to the temptation, to the defeat of the devil and all temptation in Jesus Christ. And we see our Lord go into this ahead of us. We see that Jesus goes into the temptation in the wilderness, is tried and tempted at the hands of the devil for 40 days before he enters into the world of Israel and the, among the people of Israel to execute uh, God's plan of salvation for their redemption and for their restoration as his people. Now, for us, what we are going to focus on this time is we're going to look at the words that Jesus uses towards the first temptation that the devil puts at him and the words that Jesus uses to refute that temptation, which is man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. For us as Christians in the present day, this is a good reminder. This is something that we should strive for during the 40 days of Lent. As we are focusing on ourselves, as we are hopefully increasing our self-examination and uh, where we fail and what sins we commit on a regular basis that maybe we might be able to overpower through the courage and consolation of the Holy Spirit given to us in Jesus Christ, we are reminded of the primary place and the primary ministration that our Lord gives to us in the church, which is the ministry of the Word. This reminds us that, as Jesus says, we do not live by bread alone but by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. This comes to us through confession and absolution. This comes to us through our remembrance of baptism. This comes to us through in the Lord's Supper. This comes to us in the preaching of our pastor on Sunday mornings or anytime we hear him preach. This comes to us in our own devotional practices, in the reading of the scripture, in the praying of prayers, in the study of our catechisms, which we could argue are the word of God for us in the present day. All of these things God hands over to you, to us as God's people, so that we might have consolation, protection, care, encouragement, nourishment, so that we might find a, a refuge from any temptation and trial that we are currently going through. Because just like Jesus, our God and Father does not want us to give in to temptation and sin. However, we are also frail sinners. And so during the course of the season of Lent, we not only come into contact with our frailty, but the great love of God that he has extended to us in a word of promise, a word of promise that tells you that your sins are forgiven, a word of promise where we can literally see God stare at our face and say, I will not remember you for the way that you have been back here in the past. I will remember you for the moment that we are sharing right now, that moment where you come to me in contrition, in love, in hope, that I will forgive you all of your sins. I will remember you this way and moving forward, this will be the way that we determine our relationship. That is really good news. That is a stroke of grace that God gives to you. But of course, it is rooted today in the reality that Jesus comes alongside you in your 40 days through the season of Lent to struggle with you as he struggled with the devil. And he wants you to be reminded that you do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. So as we commend ourselves over the course of these next 40 days towards the increased desire to do what we can to rid ourselves of sin, death, and the power of the devil through the working of God as he gives us his good gifts in the ministry of his word. Let us draw close. Let us take heart. Let us enjoy. Let us be encouraged by the work that God has shown forth in Jesus Christ, and especially the work that he shows us in this passage, which is that Jesus Christ himself overcomes the devil with the very word of God. Did we do good? Is that is that okay? If if you liked that, hit the button that says that you like that. Maybe even subscribe to see more of these. Even give, help us fund this mission of making known the gifts of Christ Jesus to youth and young adults. If you like this video, check out our website, higherthings.org, and check out more content from Higher Things.